Chicken Bacon Ranch, baby. It's a classic. Don't think there's any question about that. And if it's not, it will be after today. We're taking the relatively simple Chicken Bacon Ranch and virtually upgrading every component of it. The chicken, upgrade. The ranch, upgrade. The bacon, upgrade. And then it just goes together and it becomes fucking magic. I apologize to the person that uh, asked if I'd stop swearing. I don't think I can. And it's not that I want to swear, but I believe this is an important point. If I start censoring the swear words, if I start thinking about what comes out of my mouth, honestly, it will start censoring me in many different ways that I can't even comprehend right now. And I think you want the real me. And the real me is not the horrible person. Yes, I say a few words, but... Just foul mouth. I'm just foul mouth sometimes, <laughs> but yeah. So, look, we're gonna try and bleep as many as we can. But if a simple shit or the odd f makes it through, Really, are they not just words? When I meet people that come up and they say, with their kids, we watch you all the time and the kids are little and I look and I go, too much swearing? They go, no, the kids have heard it. They're just words. Words can't hurt. People can hurt. Words, pff, only if you let them hurt you, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why you always read every YouTube comment and feel completely fine about them. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, the bacon, I promised a little upgrade to the bacon. Here's what we're gonna do. This you would recognize as pieces of bacon. That part's pretty simple. We're gonna do something we've done once before to enhance our bacon. I'm gonna start by cutting it. So I wanna use half pieces. And then we're gonna take these half pieces and then just coat them lightly on both sides with some flour. That's it. And then put them on here. And I think you're gonna be really surprised at what the flour does to the bacon when this is all over. So I think it's better to show you, so forget me telling you. Just watch this, we'll get them in an oven, and we'll carry on. And the last one, and we're good. I was reminded that I should do this because a, a friend came up to me the other day and said, dude, the bacon with the flour on it, Insane. I went, you're right, I haven't done that for a while. 350 in the oven, I think it's probably gonna take, uh, depending on your 350, say 25 to say 35 minutes. Then we'll carry on. The chicken part is the exciting part for me. Well, they're all exciting parts, but we're blackening the chicken, which is something that you don't hear about all that much anymore. I think it was popular like in the 80s. Blackened chicken, blackened shrimp, stuff like that. It's really like putting on a, a pretty significant amount of seasoning and then the best way, cast iron panning it on both sides. So we're gonna do that. We'll use the grill for heat. Cast iron pan is in there getting hot right now. And then we'll, we'll sear it, you know, a minute and a half or so on each side to get those spices colored in beautifully. Then we'll push it off to the not hot side of the grill and use it like an oven. We start with our little seasoning combination. You can just make a ton of this and keep it in the pantry. It'd be good for all kinds of things, especially this. We start with smoked paprika that we'll use the most of, maybe. Come on out. Maybe three tablespoons. Does that look like three tablespoons? Should we measure it, actually? Well, can I get to where I think it is? Should we do is? a test? I'll do a test. Well, you just asked me because you thought it was there. I know, but I don't think it is there. All right, well then get it where you think so. We'll see how good your eyeball is. I think that's three tablespoons. Fine. Let me look at it again. <laughs> yes. I just looked at this. I think I'm way off. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm way off. Piss. One. Oh, no, you're not that far off. Two. Well, he's doing really small tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> made it work. <laughs> f it. There we go. Three tablespoons. Damn it. I, somebody suggested that. Let's measure. Have Max check. <laughs> Forget it. Listen, I've said this before. Close enough is good enough. <laughs> it really is. 
My food is fine. My food is full of flavor. It really is. Of course, you don't know. Come to the restaurants. Come to Not Not Tacos or Gray's. And then try the food. I think you walk out going, wow, the guy seasons his food beautifully. Lots of flavor. Big in taste, small in effort, that's what I say. You know, small season effort, you don't even need to measure. Seasoning is like hand grenades. Close enough is good enough. Doesn't matter if it blows up right in your face, get it near the face. <laughs> Chefs are at home <laughs> screaming at their TVs. <laughs> Look, I'm encouraging people to cook. Isn't that what's important? There are people that sit at home, they go, I don't, I don't want to deal with measuring utensils, forget it. If that's what I have to do, I'm not cooking. And I'm here for those people, I'm saying, listen, Sparky, I'm telling you, do away with those things. Become one with your food. That's the way. And if you're off by a little bit, who cares? I don't need the slut bong chiming in. Unless you're baking. Then you're Unless you're baking. And by the way, thank you. The, the bong makes a good point. Unless you're baking when shit's important, and I don't bake. As evidenced by the fact that David Seymour rated my banana bread fourth out of four. And I'm not bitter. I'm not really, because we won the natural hot chicken, so. I'm not bitter. I'm not keeping score, though. I'm, I'm not, not bitter. bitter. David, you left the almonds out. I'm not bitter. But it's enough, enough of that. Let's continue our sort of measuring seasoning things. Now a couple teaspoons. <laughs> <laughs> of onion powder. I'm telling you, it's close enough. And now, garlic powder. It's gonna be fine. Everybody, we're gonna be fine. So all just calm down. I need some thyme, dried. I need some oregano, or oregano as we call it. And then cayenne. And last but not least, Max, oh. salt. Boom. Give this a mix. Beautiful. This we can now apply to our chicken breasts. So here we go. Look, you know that I'm a fan of leveling out a chicken breast, but here's the deal. These guys are fairly even right now, but let's not forget, I'm gonna cook them in an oven style. After the searing, they're gonna go oven side basically, so they'll cook evenly through all the way anyway. And then we'll just pull them out when they're ready. First up, a little chosen avocado oil, because it's the best, because we love it, because it has the highest smoke point. We'll oil both sides. And then we want to season liberally with our mix. And that looks like this. You flip. Even, even, you can use here. Use what's on the plate. See, like this has got that little fold, right? This looks like it's fully seasoned but there's that flap there, so you can give it some of what's on the plate. Might as well use it, it's there, right? And now, Max, we cook. Cast iron pan, look it, just starting to smoke. Use your barbecue, ladies and gentlemen, like a stove. I'm gonna give it a little bit more oil. We'll give that a quick brush around, and then in goes the chicken. And I always go face down, face down, face down. And our last guy. You can smell it right from here. Just let it do its thing. It's gonna get about a minute and a half. We'll look when it's got some beautiful color, then we'll give it a flip. Here we go. Blackened. Blackened, yum. It's hot. That's it, there's your goal, right? Let it sit here again for another minute and a half or so. Getting the benefit of the super hot pan. This little crust has been made now lovingly on the outside. Just revel in the beautiful aroma that's coming off of this, because it's fantastic. And when that next couple minutes is up, we move it to the side that is not on, center it, close the lid. 
Next, we're making our uh, homemade ranch that we're, we're, we're upgrading it by using a bunch of fresh herbs in it rather than dried. Look, dried will work, but when you can go fresh, fresh dill and fresh parsley and fresh chives, mm, why wouldn't you? Well, you, you wouldn't if you didn't have them or didn't want to go get them. And if you had dried, use dried, be perfectly acceptable. But if you got fresh, use them. Start with sour cream, love. Approximately an equal part mayo. And the same of buttermilk. Now, dill. Oh, the smell. Chives. Parsley, and I prefer curly parsley to Italian. And now, fresh garlic, lemon juice, salt and pepper, and we mix. Oh, the herbs in here, it can smell. Let's give it a little taste. I could do that. Garlicky, herbaceous, fresh. Oh, the chicken. The chicken. You gotta make that. Come on. Look it. That's unbelievable. Look how pretty that is. All right, let's take it off. We should taste the chicken before we do anything, right? I mean, come on. Let's taste the chicken. Just one beautiful little piece, Max. I mean, look, we gotta cut it for the sandwich, so why can't we cut it and just get a little. Oh my God, look how juicy it is. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, but this bite, look at the color. The color's insane. And what insane means, insane color means insane flavor. By itself, absolutely delicious. Bursting with flavor. On a salad, tremendous on a plate with some rice and blah, whatever. Great. But inside of what we're gonna put it inside of. Do you wanna hit the bong with a piece of chicken? Should we hit the bong with some chicken? Here you go, little bong. Thank you. Little bong. Chicken now. Oh my God. Like the right amount of oh spice though. It's not like over the top spicy. <gasps> like it's over the top fupping hot it's a thousand degrees here if it's anything and by the way i said fupping f-u-p-p-i-n-g maybe i'll replace with that word from now on but that will offend people is it too close that it's offensive as well i don't think so can that be a poll if you heard someone say it is so fupping hot would you be offended yay or nay so let me finish cut this and then the bacon you haven't seen the bacon did you just speak? I don't know English? what I did. I don't know what I did. Can I just please? Okay, I can. Oh, I want just a gorgeous little lineup of chicken in this sandwich. So pretty, you'll cry. All right. And here's the bacon. And okay, it's flat because we cooked it this way. You know what? You put it on. A baking sheet, preferably elevated on a rack, it stays flat, not curling up, just nice. But now the color, it's a lovely golden brown. It's not that the, the red and white bacony look, it's a lovely golden brown, even all the way. Remember the flour that has helped do this. But I think the important part is the eating of this. It's, it's, it's fucking delicious is what it is, Max. Yes. And the grease, like mm -hmm. what grease? Wow. It's crazy, tremendous. And it's not like you're eating bacon that's been dipped in flour in terms of taste, because we know it has. It's just great. Okay, let's go.
Let's start. We got the bread to grill and make beautiful. Let's do it. First things first, we need to melt some butter, Max. Do you know why? It's for the outside of the bread because we're doing fantastic things to it. And it's gonna be garlic butter. Beautiful. Tiny bit of salt. Yes, it's salted butter, leave me alone. Tiny bit of pepper. And a little inch pay of parsley. That'd be a little pinch of parsley for those that don't speak pig Latin. So we'll give this guy a little mix. Okay, buddy, you do your thing. Now let's talk about bread. Couple pieces of a uh, wheat. Uh, not a super dark one, kind of a light one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I don't need to put the garlic butter that, oh my God, just wafted right up. Here. Good Lord. I don't need to put uh, the garlic butter on both sides. I'm just gonna put it on one side. But I do want both sides toasted to give a little extra crunch. So. It's already starting. It's maybe a minute, minute and a half. Then we'll uh, paint on the garlic butter stuff. And then it comes off and then we're just building. It's honestly, it's that simple. Chicken, bacon, it's incredible ranch. Oh my God. It's a dream sandwich in the making, honestly. It's the beginning of May in San Diego. You know what this means for the summer? We're fat. Maybe I should just use that word. Somebody's gonna tune in one day who doesn't know me and go, what? No what is this guy saying? So we just do this. I can see I'm gonna have to hold the bread. Can I just tell you what's gonna happen here when you eat this? When I eat it? Hello. Great things. Great things. All right, you got it covered. Nice little layer. We give these guys a flip. This is the inside. The garlic butter is the outside. These will come off and then we build Maxi. And then we build. And here's our two breads. Our two breads? Here's our bread. Looking gorgeous. Remember this is the outside. So let's put one face down. I will build on this. And you know we're gonna start with Max. Of course, our homemade Riz Anch. That's like the best ranch ever. The Bong just had some. She's like, oh my God, it's so good. Now, for some crunch, we will absolutely add some finely shredded iceberg lettuce, which by the way gets a bad rap because it's just like a thousand percent water. And who gives a shit? Who cares? It's here for crunch. That's why it's here. And it's a perfect wedge. It should just be used more. I think I'm gonna start a campaign. Bring back iceberg lettuce. Max, next chicken. Look at it. And you might as well display the hard work, the, the results of your hard work, right? Hey, this guy's pissing me off, man. After everything I said about this stupid lettuce. Shall we just continue on? Chicken. Chicken. You know what's coming next? Do you know what's coming next? Bacon. Thank you. Bacon. I like it to fit together like a puzzle. Wait a second. You. No. Fine. Now, Max, you know what's next. Max, do you know what comes next? Bacon? Nope. More chicken. Because why wouldn't we want to duplicate the layers of chicken on here when it's this good. Damn, Am I right? Damn, damn, you're right. Look at these edges, boy. The edges are crazy, crazy beautiful. The lid, but with a little bit more ranch. Ranch, 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 ranch. And now, Max, the part of the process we lovingly refer to as the crowning. Crowning. Wait, isn't that a term in the middle of a woman having babies? Yes. Okay, it's a very different thing. Let's not use that term anymore, maybe. And there it is, Max. Your garlic bread CBR. Or, as we say behind the scenes, the GBCBR. 
And then after the crowning, Max, we like to do what we refer to as the, the, this is the cutting. God. I love the crunch. And this is called the unveiling or the delivering. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. So some of the bake, the chicken is skidded back a bit, but yeah. Here's what we're looking at. Here's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with unruly iceberg lettuce. Maybe that's why it gets a bad rap. We're dealing with the, the beautifully grilled garlic bread exterior. Two layers of our homemade, amazingly fresh ranch. The difficult to deal with iceberg lettuce. Our blackened chicken bookending layers of uber crispy, perfectly cooked pieces of bacon. This is a thing to behold, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, I'd call it a work of art that will now end up in my stomach. And, but just look at the color. Before I, look at the color that the blackening spices have, have created here. And I can already hear somebody going, that's not black. Black is darker. When I was in a restaurant in Pittsburgh in 1997, we used to make our chicken really black. That's like red chicken. I can just hear it. Well, guess what, the bitch? I'm eating this now, and you aren't. You hear that? I'm not gonna lie. It's actually not very good. I am lying. I'm completely kidding. This is arguably the best sandwich I've ever made. There's hints of the garlic bread steak sandwich that we made last year, whenever. That was good. This is, sorry, absolutely fucking insane. And I didn't say fucking. I said fucking insane. You heard the crunch. First of the, the bread that we griddle, then the bacon on the inside, and then you get that luscious ranch that I know I said you could use you could use dried ingredients, but if you can get the fresh, get them. I, I will now end. Thank you for watching us. We love that you're here. Uh, we want you to tell your friends if you dig this. It, tell friends that can't cook. Just like this. You don't, you don't want to be too heavy about them being a shit cook. So you go, have you watched Sam the Cooking Guy? He's so funny. It's very entertaining. And then they'll go, oh, maybe they'll just watch for that. And then maybe they'll pick up a few tips. But we appreciate it. Subscribe if you dig us. The notification bell lets us tell you when there's new episodes. You don't have to come looking for us. And it's not like we're right there invasive in your email. Like, hey, we're here. I don't know. How does it work? Sam the Cooking Guy uploaded a video. And it shows you the JPEG. Hey, it's nice. You get the picture that Max worked so hard over. You get to find out what this is that I worked that I worked so hard over. You get to hear the bongs comments and the, certainly worth it. So I just want to eat the hell out of this. Thank you. Please make this. I say it a lot. Please. This one. Forget everything in the last month. This is the one I want you to make. This one. This one. Do it for me.